In this example, we're going to take a look at the function f of x equals 1 half x squared minus 5x plus 9, and we'll see that this is a quadratic function, its degree is 2 right here, and it's written in standard form. And so we're going to discuss some of its characteristics, including its domain and range, and its graph, uh, whether the graph opens upward or downward, finding its vertex, uh, increasing and decreasing of the function, that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and get started. So we can see that this is written in standard form, as we said already, because it's ax squared plus bx plus c. And so the a value here, or the leading coefficient, is going to be 1 half. The b value, or the coefficient of the linear term, is going to be negative 5. And the c value, or this constant out here, is going to be 9. And we're going to use these values here in a little bit to kind of uh, find out some of the characteristics of this function. So let's go ahead and start talking about its graph. We know that the graph of a quadratic function is going to be a parabola. And since it's a function here, we know that this parabola is either going to open upward or it's going to open downward. And its vertex will be either here or here, depending on which one we're dealing with. And so how can we determine that? Well, the a value, or the leading coefficient, will determine which direction or, or where the parabola opens. And so if it opens upward, it's because your leading coefficient was greater than zero or positive. And if it opens downward, it's because your leading coefficient is less than zero or negative. And so when we look at our a value here, a is one half, which that's positive. So since it's positive, we know that this parabola is going to open upward. Okay, well with that in mind, its vertex down here we know is actually going to be a minimum value of the function. So let's go ahead and find that vertex or find that minimum value. And so we know the vertex is going to have an x value and a y value. It's an ordered pair. And so the x value we can find by taking the opposite of b over 2a. And we just have this little formula here. All right, well, what's the opposite of b? Well, my b value was negative 5, so it's going to be the opposite of negative 5 over twice the a value. What was the a value? Yeah, we said that was 1 half. Okay, so let's talk about simplifying this thing. The opposite of negative 5, well, that'll be positive 5, and then 2 times a half, actually those just cancel, and that's just 1. So 5 over 1 is 5. So that's handy. So we can see that the x-coordinate, or the x-value of our vertex, is going to be positive 5. Well, then how can we go ahead and find that y-value? Well, remember, when we're dealing with functions, we kind of have this input-output thing going on where our input is our x and our output is our y. And so we know that the x is 5, and so we can go ahead and plug that into our function. So f at 5 is going to be this y value. So let's go ahead and look at this. So it's going to be 1 half times, well, 5 squared minus 5 times 5, and then plus 9. Okay, so let's go ahead and work this out. So 5 squared is going to be 25, and then we'll kind of just bring the rest of this along. All right, so 1 half of 25, well, we could say 12.5, or we could leave it as a fraction here. kind of doesn't matter. And this is going to be minus 25 plus 9. We could get common denominators for everything if you wanted. So 25 over 2 minus 50 over 2 plus 18 over 2. And then 25 minus 50 is negative 25 plus 18 is negative 7 halves. And that will be our y value. All right, so we have both our x value and our y value for our vertex. So let's go ahead and write that as an ordered pair. Our vertex is going to be 5 negative 7 halves. All right, so there we go. And we already said that this point, this vertex, is going to be a minimum value for the function because our parabola will open upward. All right, well, let's go ahead and discuss the axis of symmetry. 
And so our axis of symmetry is just going to be this vertical line that's going to pass through our vertex. So it'll be a vertical line that passes through our vertex that uh, kind of sets up this nice symmetry between the two legs of this parabola. And remember, in our cases here that we're doing, this axis of symmetry is going to be a vertical line, so x equals, and it will always pass through the vertex. So it's actually going to be x equals, and then just the x value from our vertex, so that was 5. Okay, so here is our vertex, here is our axis of symmetry, and here in a moment when we're done, I'm going to show you a graph and kind of how all of this fits together. But before we do that, let's go ahead and find the domain and the range of this function as well. And so remember, domain concerns itself with what are all the acceptable values that I can plug in to this function. Well, all we're doing with our x values, we're just squaring them and multiplying and adding and subtracting, so there really isn't any limitations. So the domain then, we could write as all real numbers, or an interval notation, it will be negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, so not too bad at all. But our range, though, remember that concerns itself with all the possible y values, so that concerns itself with the, the vertical. And so going back to our little graph here, we know that it's opening upward, and we know that this vertex is the minimum of the graph. So we know there are no y values below, but we're going to have every y value above because these arrows are going up, up, up forever. And so we know the range is going to start down here at the y value of our vertex, so negative 7 halves, and it will go up, up, up forever to infinity. Okay, so, and uh, we use a bracket here because the vertex is included in the range, and parentheses always get, let's see, infinities always get the parentheses right here, so we're always going to put parentheses with those rascals. Okay, so maybe we can talk about also increasing and decreasing for our function. So where is our function increasing and where is our function decreasing? So remember, increasing means as we move from left to right, our function is going up. And decreasing means as we move from left to right, our function is moving down. So going back to our uh, little graph here, it looks like we're decreasing from left to right here until we hit the vertex and then we're increasing after that. So, where are we increasing? Well, we're increasing to the right of the vertex, so it'll be from 5 to positive infinity, and we're decreasing to the left of the vertex, so that'll be negative infinity up to 5, just like that. Okay, so we've talked about uh, what our parabola looks like, opens upward. We talked about the vertex is the minimum value for the function. We went ahead and found that vertex, and we found the axis of symmetry as well. We determined the domain and the range of this function, and where our function is increasing and decreasing. So let's go ahead and finish this video off by showing you a graph and labeling some of its parts.